more often than not, we end up disregarding dictators as being some of the richest people in the world because they don't appear on the cover of magazines and don't fit the billionaire bill. Well, today, we're going to unveil to you some of the richest dictators of all time. Let's dive right in. The House of Saud. In 2015, estimated to be worth about $17 billion before his death, King Abdullah bin Abdul Aziz was the absolute monarch of Saudi Arabia. Abdullah and his thousands of related royals ruled the kingdom of Saudi Arabia with an iron fist of medieval feudalism and theocracy as the head of the House of Saud. In 2014, exports alone were worth $268 billion. The Saudi royal family has enjoyed massive profits from the country's crude oil wealth through the state-owned oil monopoly Saudi Arabian Oil Co., better known as Saudi Aramco. Don't be fooled. Riyadh has long faced criticism from the international community and human rights organizations for its poor human rights record. So all this money hasn't made life in Saudi Arabia a more pleasant place to live by any means. There are numerous restrictions on freedom of speech. Moreover, women barely have any rights. Punishments such as beheading, amputations, and the least lethal of the bunch, flogging, are common. It's estimated that the House of Saud would be worth as much as $14 trillion if one were to combine all their financial holdings and staggering wealth together, taking the entire Saudi royal family as a single entity. Muammar Gaddafi. In March of 2011, many were astonished at the reported numbers when the assets of former Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi and his family were frozen. The UK had frozen $1 billion, Canada $2.4 billion, Austria $1.7 billion, and lastly the US seized a whopping $30 billion in his family's investments. It was reported that these numbers were nowhere close to the actual total despite these staggering sums. If we include bank accounts, corporate investments, and real estate he accumulated around the world, Gaddafi was said to have amassed an oil and gas fortune of between $75 billion to as high as a whopping $200 billion during his 42-year reign. Also, being able to withdraw money at will and spending much on social programs and infrastructure, Gaddafi and his family had complete control over the largest oil reserves in Africa as the leader of Libya for decades. Suharto. In the aftermath of a CIA-backed 1965 seizure of power, one of the most brutal dictators in history who exterminated over a million lives also had a passion for stolen government money as well as mass murder. We're talking about a U.S. ally in the Cold War, Indonesia's military leader Suharto. While building a corrupt authoritarian regime after being appointed the president, Suharto used a combination of a genocidal war with East Timor, domestic purges, and ethnic cleansing to keep himself in power. Making between $480 million to almost $1.5 billion a year for a whopping total of $15 to $35 billion stolen from the state, Suharto and his family reaped the benefits of the new state at the same time. Forgoing the enormous palaces, swimming pools, and private zoos, he was living a modest life in public. Suharto kept his enormous embezzled fortune under wraps, unlike most dictators. Until after his death, the full amount of his family's theft wasn't known. This financial wizardry apparently did not extend to the rest of his family, as corruption investigators found that roughly 90% of the money had been squandered in terrible investments while Suharto is credited with economic growth. Hassan al Bokaya. Currently, one of the richest monarchs in the world is Hassan al Bokaya, who is the current Sultan of Brunei. Since 1962, in essence making Brunei a monarchical dictatorship under emergency rule, he has been the head of state with full executive authority under the country's 1959 constitution. To make the sultan infallible by law, the constitution was further amended in 2006. As is the case with many dictatorships, he's also the minister of defense and finance as well as the prime minister. Ferdinand Marcos. In 1972, even after he declared martial law, Marcos institutionalized corruption on a massive scale, and multinational corporations still prospered. Over 60,000 Filipinos had been arrested for political reasons, and the armed forces had quadrupled in size by 1997. 
Foreign debt increased from an initial one to over 25 billion, and torture was common over the course of his 20 years in power. Making its way into Marcos's pockets, or those of his cronies, it's estimated as much as a third of that sum, running out to roughly 8 billion, was gone. Hasni Mubarak. Over his 30-year reign, alongside his sons and family taking cuts on all construction projects in Egypt while his people struggled on a daily basis, the Egyptian president amassed enormous wealth. With some estimates of his personal wealth being as high as $70 billion due to corruption, only now, after the 2011 Egyptian revolution, reports of the 88-year-old dictator's fortunes are coming out. With the funds being stashed in bank accounts at home and abroad in tax havens like Switzerland, there are reports of illegal business activities, foreign property ownership, as well as, but not limited to, bribery. Saddam Hussein when a coalition of foreign nations led by the U.S. and U.K. invaded the country to depose him, from 1979 until the spring of 2003, Saddam Hussein ruled Iraq with an iron fist. Saddam enriched himself on Iraqi oil revenue for over two decades as the fifth president of Iraq, taking control of the major banks and nationalizing the oil industry. Hussein's estimated net worth in 2003 stood at a whopping $2 billion. In every major city all over the desert nation, he had been building dozens of vast, gaudy palaces, around a hundred, which also included one built on the ancient foundations of Babylon in one of the greatest acts of historical vandalism of the modern age. Inscriptions hailing Nebuchadnezzar on the original brickwork were what the new bricks were put on top of. Even as UN sanctions caused disease among his people from lack of food and medicine, as well as widespread starvation, Saddam and his family always lived well. Saddam and his sons withdrew more than one billion from the Iraqi Central Bank in stainless steel briefcases carried on three flatbed trucks mere hours before the first bombs fell. In 2006, he was hanged after being captured. How and why do they accumulate so much wealth? Any sane person would wonder why and how these leaders amassed so much wealth. Well, here's why. Typically, dictators are insulated from reality due to their illusions of grandeur. Moreover, their wealth, power, and loyal, bribed, entourage of politicians as well as armed forces keep them more than well protected. Living without any restrictions just inflates their egos further while they live off the money they hoard from their poverty-stricken countries with no remorse. That's all we have for you today, folks, but we'll be back with similar videos. Like, comment, and subscribe to stay in the loop. Until then, goodbye for now.